Hello and welcome to my channel. If you haven't uh, visited me before, I grow a tropical style garden here in the UK and um, I tend to use lots of hardy evergreens to give the garden structure and look good most of the year. But on the other side of that, I do also grow quite a few tropical tenders and plants maybe that we consider as house plants here and that requires a certain amount of overwintering. So I've been asked many times um, through messages and comments about whether I can show inside my greenhouse. So I thought I'd do a quick look around today. It's nothing special. I built it probably about 10 years ago. It actually wasn't intended to be sort of a greenhouse, more of a plant room. So it was made of timber. It's insulated pretty much up to about four foot high and then it's just got windows and glass and a polycarbonate roof this way i get enough light for the plants in winter but because it's not all glass i don't lose nowhere near as much heat um so i tend to keep this heated to just above one or two degrees and then to the right here I've actually took the doors off it, but I've made like a propagator with a heated bench, um, which I keep some of the plants that need that little bit more heat. So in general, this greenhouse, if it's naught degrees outside Celsius, then this will probably, with no additional heat, stay about three degrees warmer than that. So we'd probably have about three degrees Celsius in here. And in this propagator, if I didn't have the heat bench on the bottom and it was just left and these and it has the doors on the front, that will probably stay about six degrees warmer than the outside. It's about three degrees warmer in there than the rest of the greenhouse with no additional heat. That's just because providing you're getting a few sunny sort of winter days, the sun will get in there. It's got silver foil on the back, which sort of helps reflect the heat around. It sort of stores the heat a bit with the door shut, stays warmer much longer. So the plants that need that little bit more heat to get them through winter without struggling, it's easier to put them in there. So for in this instance, I have quite a lot of colocations in there um, that are starting to slowly die off and go dormant. But um, yeah, generally, all I do to heat it is I have one of these BioGreen Phoenix heaters. Um, absolutely brilliant. That's just set to come on at about one or two degrees Celsius just to keep it frost free. Um, if you've got any questions about that, ask in the comments. For me, it's depending on the size of your greenhouse, but it's, it's one of the best heaters out there. Um, plus it's got a fan on it as well. And I also have, which I don't use that much, but I do also have a sort of fan on the wall that circulates and can aerate as well. So without going on about it too much, let's actually show you what I've got in here. So um, if you don't know, and to be fair, I haven't really shown them that much on my channel, but I have collected over the years, probably about a hundred different varieties of colocasia, um, elephant ears in America. So they, there is many different varieties of colocasia and I'm not gonna go too much into overwintering them because I'd like to do a separate video because it really does vary on so many variables, what variety they are, what temperatures you're keeping them at, whether you're dry storing them, whether you're trying to keep them um, sort of in growth. Yeah, loads, loads of variables. So I'd like to do a separate video on that, which I'll put on my channel, hopefully very soon. I may even be able to do it today if I've got time. Um, today is a wet and windy November day. These plants are not looking at their best because especially the colocations that are, have slowly been drying off and getting a bit more dormant 
Um, but that's not an issue because they sort of, um, they don't need to keep be kept growing all year round. If you've got some small colocasias um, that are probably only two or three inches high, you'll probably want to keep them going on a sunny windowsill. But like I say, I'm not going to go too much into detail with that. I'd rather just show what I've got in here. Um, and then any questions you can ask me in the comments and I can deal with it there. So, as you come in the door to the left, we've just got some spare canners. They're like my backup plants. Um, I do leave most of my canners in the ground. My soil's quite free draining. I don't even tend to mulch them. Um, I'm not saying don't mulch them because it's generally a good idea, but if you've got free draining soil um, and you don't get stupid cold weather, then for me, like I say, most of my canners pretty much come back every year. But I do bring some in that I pot up as a bit of backup or because I haven't got room or maybe for a sort of um, potted display, whatever it is. So just mixed in here, there's probably a, there's a can of Cleopatra. This one is Tropicana Gold. Then we have some spares that I had of my Bird of Paradise which is a few more over there. This one is Colocasia Aloha. If it was brighter in here, this would have a lot more black on the leaf. Um, like I say, don't expect the Colocasias to be looking really good because I'm actually letting them dry out to sort of slowly go a bit more dormant. So this one is Lemon and Lime Gecko and it's got this green and green variegated leaf and sort of these pinky striped stems then we've just got these were just some self-seeded seedlings of some hebes that i'm just growing on and then we've got that's just a cutting of a begonia which i'll uh, explain a little bit more on the main plant over there in a minute so just at the back is a ginger, which is a green one with slightly white flecks. It's called Dr. Moy. Um, that will, so like them and lots of these plants, at the minute, these cannas you'll see, still got leaves on. I will probably, because I still have a lot more plants outside to bring in, I am probably going to cut all these cannas right back down to the sort of bottom of the base of the pot apart from any little tiny new shoots. So for instance, this Tropicana Gold, I will probably just cut across here, maybe in a few weeks time, as it gets nearer to December. And then I can just, cause they'll grow back quick in spring. I don't need to worry about, it. I'm gonna pop them up anyway into new fresh pots. It would just allow me to get a lot more storage in here. I can stack them up better, just keep them just slightly moist and they'll be fine. You know, I probably, you're gonna get, as you can see on that one, these little shoots coming through. Obviously they'll get left and they'll be, they'll slowly start growing a little bit through winter if the greenhouse gets warm enough on the sunny days. But yeah, if I keep everything in leaf, I'm more likely to get pests. I'm more likely to get fungal problems. Um, and it's unnecessary. I'm not really going to gain anything. The growth is gonna be so limited through winter and it's gonna be weak tender growth so it's just not worth it but i tend to go on a rule that if i can only let these sort of be dormant for sort of about three months so that means december january february then start bringing everything back into growth so i can give them a good head start so that's why i haven't cut them all back yet because i'm letting them just sort of keep getting that extra bit of light in a little bit of growth before i cut them back but then the main reason is like i've just said storage reasons pest reasons and just ease of maintenance you cut them back down they don't need any work for a few months the canners don't um and you can do a similar thing with the colocasias where you can cut them back down dry store them but like i say i'm going to do that in another video because this will drag out too long and become way too overcomplicated. so what do we have this is that's just uh, not a good example, actually, because the variegation is not showing very well. But that is actually a, 
offshoot of a can of tornado. I do have a better one further over there. This one is Colocasia Diamond Head, which is a black glossy leafed Colocasia and is a clumper. You can see it's got quite a few little offshoots there. Probably, if I wanted to, I could sort of separate them. I could dig around, see what they've got, see if they've got some roots, pop them up in really little pots and grow them on separately and keep them as almost like a house plant. Um, so I could do that. Like I say, we'll have a bit of a discussion about that in the Colocasia video. Um, just more different varieties of Colocasia in here. This one is my redemption that was outside till recently. Now, this is a great example of a no-no. So this is dying back, not looking that great, but bits like this are gonna cause you a problem. It's slowly starting to get fungal issues, which is down to the cooler, damper days, the high humidity, and um, lack of airflow is massive. That's why on the warmer days, it's really important to get the doors open on your greenhouse. You know, I'd like to say run a fan as well, on and off, on maybe on a timer. That all depends on, you know, what the electric sort of prices are now. I do have to think about that. I do have to make sure that I haven't got heat benches going, grow lights going, um, continuously electric heaters, because you get to a point where it's like, you know, it could end up costing you that much to keep one of these places going that it's not sort of worth it. But for me, obviously, I've got quite a, um, a lot of plants in here. So my main key is to keep it sort of frost free and um, just get them ticking over. That's all that really matters for me. So down here, absolutely lovely colocasia and I'm really surprised it's still looking this good this time of year. So this is colocasia yellow splash. So it's a yellow and green variegated colocasia with green stems. Um, I have had a few that have reverted. So the offshoots have only just produced plain green leaves and they haven't actually sort of gone back to then getting the variegation. So like a lot of variegated plants that can revert, mm. these can do it. So I suppose as you get sort of more, you propagate and get more offshoots off it. You may get the odd one that's just plain green, but you will still get offshoots that are variegated as well. But nearly every leaf is different. So you've got that variegation, this one, this one. A stunning plant. And actually, I probably expected that to start deteriorating, but it's just, you know, because I am leaving it. I'm not watering them much. I'm The soil is pretty much moist, but they've not been watered probably for a few weeks now. Um, and I'm not saying do that because obviously everyone's, if you've got a greenhouse that's super warm in the on sunny days, you may need to sort of keep them sort of more watered. But for me, I because I'm happy to let these sort of go dormant and reserve their energy until spring. It doesn't really matter, but yeah, it's kept looking really good. One of the best canners, in my opinion, that I would say to most people grow, if you're looking for a dark leafed canner, is Canna Australia. It has sort of reddy orangey flowers, probably, I don't know, maybe a five foot canner, so it's not, the tallest canner but the foliage is just sort of dark burgundy glossy it has a sort of really good sort of upright habit um where some canners like bird of paradise can get a bit tall and floppy it's just yeah really good sort of for a dark leafed foliage canner it's one of the best out there that's canner australia and then we do have a couple of house plants so there's a variegated Swiss cheese plant. Um, if it probably gets, if a, that may go inside into my house, 
um, sort of from December onwards. I'm going to see. I'm going to see how the winter goes. If I can keep it out here, it really likes it in here because of the humidity is a lot higher than in my house, which is due to central heating. It gets quite dry. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a stunning plant. This one, probably, you know, it looks just like Moussa Bajou. It's actually, and these were sort of sold probably in the UK, maybe six, seven years ago. It's a Moussa Mekong Giant. Now, anyone that wants this, if you live in the UK, don't bother. It, it just needs way more heat than sort of Moussa Bajou. Um, it looks almost the same. It is meant to get really big, but yeah, not in our climate. It's, um, it, 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 it likes the heat to grow. And I mean, sort of like 20 to 30 Celsius days all the time. You know, it's just, it's probably just not worth the hassle really. Um, I think they became a bit of a thing and I got one and I, this is probably an offshoot or maybe second or third offshoot off the original plant I bought a few years ago. Um, yeah. Not really worth the effort, but I still keep it anyway. <laughs> so here we have, all right, give me a minute to think. Rhododendron Sawoilenense, if I've said that right. It's a bit of a pain. Um, it's in a pot. It's a one of the bigger leafed rhod rhododendron. Rhododendrons. Crikey, I'm losing my words today. Um, yeah, really nice. Did have another one. Planted in my garden. That didn't do really well. This may be able to stay out. I've got a few plants in here that probably could stay out during the winter. But I'd sort of rather sort of not, because I've got the space, bring them in. They're in pots. It's no real hassle. The only bit I've got to sort of watch, and this is why I've got to cut a lot of this back, is because I've been a little bit sort of not really in here for the last uh, couple of a few weeks. I am having problems with the airflow and starting to get fungal issues. So stuff like this. So any leaves where this is starting to happen and this is mainly down to the humidity and the lack of airflow. I'm going to have to just cut these off because they're going to cause me problems. Another thing you've got to watch is if I scan around here, so that's a variegated potted Brugmansia. That's going to be trimmed back as well because as the leaves fall, they just land on these other plants, like this can of tornado, and they're just going to cause me fungal issues. So this is why a lot of these plants just cut them back. You don't need to keep them growing unless you've got the room, see? For instance, I've crammed these all in at the back just to make sure I can get around the greenhouse. But this is not ideal at all. You do not want them crammed in like this. It's, you're going to have just as much problems with all the fung fungal issues and pest issues as you would sort of... It would be more grief than actually just cutting them back to the ground. So I'm showing this is actually... There's a lot here, I would say is the way not to do it um as the way is to do it so just up there there's just some offshoots of different things cuttings that i've took from um the yellow stritula i know the name has changed on that now then we've just got some agaves and some bromeliads so it's windy out there today 40 mile an hour winds due today, making the greenhouse whistle. Um, like I say, there's a variegated Brugmansia there. The leaves are starting to drop because it's drying out a bit. So I'm just gonna almost cut them leaves off soon to gain a bit more room. Be absolutely fine. Um, I've got a couple of very neglected bird of paradises in here because I didn't get to pot them up this year. So, not good. Um, this one is Brassiopsis bodinieri. That's been outside for the latter part of the summer. 
Um, hardiness is not really known, so I think it's one of the more tender ones, so not risking it. I've also got, which doesn't look good at all because I sort of almost got a bit of root rot last year, but over here is my Trevisia. It's like the snowflake type plant. Now that's not a good example and I've got to give that a bit of care next year because they're not easy to get hold of and um, I'd like to get that looking as good as it did a couple of years ago. So what else have we got? We've just got some tender begonias and this one is one of my favourite begonias. It is Begonia Benita Chibo. I'll put it on the screen just so you can see absolutely lovely sort of palmate foliage with this real sort of purpley tinge really does brighten up a shady spot in your garden during the sort of summer months and um yeah one of my favorites with begonia luxurians which if i just back up a little bit this is begonia luxurians um there's a couple there in small pots they were planted in my garden for the later part of the season. So Begonia Luxurians, if you can bring them into somewhere frost free, ideal, but they do require to be kept just slightly moist and they do want that little bit of humidity. You don't wanna, if you bring them into the house and trying to keep them as a house plant, they will not like that dry air. You know, if you wanna keep them looking good, you sort of gotta keep them somewhere like Guinea, to be fair, ideally, um, to keep them looking green and fresh. But I find them really easy in here. Uh, what else have we got? So this is literally I brought last week, I think. So this is another Brassiopsis. This is Fatsoides. So it's very similar to Brassiopsis mitis. But these leaves are a little bit more sort of corrugated, I would say, maybe. This is meant to be hardy. So, but obviously it's a young plant. I've just brought it. I'm going to let it grow bigger. But it is going to eventually go into the garden. Maybe next year. It depends how well it grows. Um, but, yeah. Getting a bit of a fan of these now. They're not cheap plants, but... They're sort of like, you know, the leaf shape is just really unusual. What else have we got in here then? So we've got Canna Intrigue, which is very similar to Canna Bird of Paradise. I've got quite a few big clumps of this, to be fair, which I haven't even brought in yet. It's quite a few, a lot of stuff still out. Um, really is sort of a, this isn't a good example at all, but it's sort of a very, upright slender leafed burgundy um, canna can get a little bit sort of i'll put it a bit further back in the border because it's that and bird of paradise can get a little bit floppy so may need staking sometimes i'm just trying to think i've not really got a good angle i can get of the bird of paradise canna so what else have we got here so we've got a mojito and not looking good, but this is the painted black colocasia. Um, really nice colocasia to be fair. I wouldn't say it's, I know this, <laughs> it doesn't look really nice at the minute, but it's a really dark black glossy colocasia. But personally, as an all rounder, I would probably pick the Colocasia Diamond Head or Black Coral over that. I think they're just probably better growers in the UK climate with the sort of heat we get. Um, right, here is another horrible looking Pharaoh's Mask. This was left out quite late, so it started to go dormant. And this one did get a bit of spider mite as well. Now, at this time of year, mid-November I don't care that it looks rough like this because I'm letting it go dormant anyway but it's in a big pot for that size of plant so it is going to have to be sort of dug out and put into a smaller plant 
and I'll show how that's done soon um, in the other video. But I just want to point out, I don't care if these cola cases look rough at this time of year. It doesn't matter. I'm deliberately letting them go on the drier side, getting ready to overwinter them. But you do not want them to dry totally out at this stage because I've I've lost cola cases in the past because I've let the corms almost get baked and go too dry. So long story short, they're a, they're a real pain. <laughs> Cola cases are. Um, so what we've got here, these I've just brought from Craig from Grow Paradise. These were fascicularia by Cola, um, which is like a hardy bromeliad. I had an area in the garden where I wanted to put more of a clump in. I already have a couple of plants out there, but I've brought these to go in in spring. So here we've got a mojito, again, not looking good way too big a pot if i keep that in that pot and just let that go dormant there's too much moisture in there that's probably going to rot away that needs to be dug up and put in a smaller pot really free draining mix as with a lot of these codacaceous so under here this video has turned out to be a lot longer than i ever imagined so we've just got a couple of salvia cuttings there for the garden then i'll get a better example in a minute but at the back there is a load of my slow growing Edward Needham, uh, Fatsier Edward Needham seedlings. They're all looking pretty similar. I was sort of hoping maybe for a little bit of variation, but not yet. Um, then there's just some Akuba seedlings, which actually, so these were all grown from the variegated Akuba but quite a few of them have just come out plain green as well. And I have grown quite a few Akuba seedlings in the past. And every now and again, you do get one that's got a slightly longer leaf shape or different variation, variegation. So I tend to grow these things, just hoping to get something a little different one day. So let's go into, <coughs> excuse me, the propagator. So at this moment, this has been a good few years. I think I should just zoom out a bit because I've just realized I'm probably way too close. No, that's not working. So basically this is a heated bench with heated cables, sand and a membrane. And then I just have trays on here or put the pots directly on. It has this thermostat, which I can adjust to do the heat. Now, I'll, as it gets colder, I will put the doors on this. It's only made out of an old plastic greenhouse I had. Um, but at the minute, I don't want the doors on it because I'm trying to keep as much airflow as I can to keep these sort of cola cases just slowly ticking over. Um, but if I turn the heater on, this is the problem. If I turn the heated bench on and I'm keeping them on the, dry, on the drier side, I could easily quite bake them. So it's re it really is a tricky scenario to find the right sort of balance and that's why I tend to keep a lot of my cola cases. Um, I have a cabin down the bottom of the garden and I will keep a lot of the smaller ones as backup under grow lights, growing them on. I have done a video on that on my channel um, called A Collector's Guide to Growing Cola Cases. That is for very, very small cola cases that you're just trying to bulk up and get through winter. But Colocations, the more variables you have, the more problems you're going to have. So, for instance, if you this this temperature in here is going to go from maybe four degrees to a really sunny day and it hits 20 degrees in January. Well, that makes it awkward because a lot of your plants are sort of gone dormant. Then they want to start growing. Then they go colder again. 
So that's why a lot of these plants are better to let them go dormant, just try and dry store them or, you know, use your preferred method and just keep them ticking over and then let the growth happen in spring. But um, for someone that says they're not going to talk about overwintering and codacacias, I keep going on about it. So in here I have some morning dews. Um, there's some redemption in there. There's some El Paleo, known as Milky Way. There's quite a few different varieties in there. And like I say, I still have some outside. I still have, I have some loads of different ones in my cabin down the bottom. I do, I do question myself every year to why I grow so many, because they are a pain. Um, right, just finishing off. This is my Amorphophallus cognac. It is my first year over a wintering. It's in real free drain mix in a pot. I am going to just, as this starts to die off, I am, I think I'm going to cut the top growth off. I'm going to lift it and just dry store the bulb. Um, I think that's, they don't like moisture in the cold winters. So I think that's going to be the way to do it and take up a little less room. And so we've, so we've just got, this side we've just got some sort of more tender begonias that I just bought cheap from the garden centre. Then we've got probably a spider plant in there. Clivia, bromeliads, a um, couple of ferns. Nothing too special, just some shadier plants that I used to add that, they're a bit more tender that I used to add that little bit of difference in the summer months um just a potting bench to the right there so for most of my canners for most of my colocations when i pot them up i will use a mix of multi-purpose compost and plenty of perlite even through the summer because I know that if I plant anything, it's in a really free draining mix. I can always water more. And if the actual pot is quite free draining, I can always put it in a tray of water to make sure it's well watered. I can, if I plant it, so let's say it's a canna or a colocasia and I plant it, um, I know I can in the bottom of the hole put something more enriched, like some manure and that mixed in. But I know always around the rhizomes or the corms, I've got a good free draining mix and I do that with pretty much all my tender plants. So I know when it's in a pot, if it comes to overwintering, I can control the moisture levels a lot better by doing that. I do have various mixes for different plants. Some plants are gonna want something a lot more free draining. Um, it is my choice. It allows me to sort of leave plants out over winter because I know that the garden is quite free draining and most of the plants are in this type of mix. Um, so yeah, that's enough about that. So like I say, I'm looking at the timer and that says it's a 30 odd minute video, which it was never intended to be. Um, so yeah, any questions? please put it in the comments. I'm sorry I didn't put all the names up of all the plants. If it would just take me absolutely ages to edit that all in. So if you want to know any, tell me the timestamp of where the plant is if I haven't named it and I'll see what I can do. Um, what I would say is please don't comment saying, how do you overwinter this colocasia? How do you overwinter that colocasia? Because it's, I'd rather do it in a separate video because there is just so much grief about it, honestly. It, it, depending on the variety and how you're keeping it. Not grief, variables. So I'd rather sort of specify that a little bit more. Right, I can feel myself rambling on. So I'm going to shut up now. Anything else you want to know, please ask. Thank you very much and um, cheers for watching.